We're now in the little town of Condonin and uh, it also has an RV parking area just opposite the post office here next to the old rail line so if you're this way in a self-contained vehicle again you can park up here we're just going to have a look at the sign and see what the rules are for that uh -huh. so it's only a single night here and of course fully self-contained vehicles okay no swags no tents no sleeping in passenger vehicles no open fires okay so that is fairly straightforward just uh, one night in town but also useful to know and uh, there is a dump point here somewhere more information call the show of condiment okay and this is the small caravan facility in Condonin. Uh, useful if you need to stay in the area, I guess. Not very big. Just a few travellers in there. just outside the caravan park and there's a little info bay and next to that is a public toilet so if you are only just passing through and you need a loo good place to stop off About 12 kilometres southeast of Kondanin is Yurikine Rock. This place is uh, well known locally for wildflowers. Not really sure if there's much here at the moment because I think we are a little bit early in the season. We've been told that there's some wildflowers on the walk trails around the rock, so we're going to head down there in a minute and have a look, but uh, we just came up on top for lunch. Unfortunately there's a bit of an unsightly water tank sitting up here with us. Uh, not the most beautiful structure, but uh, this is a water catchment spot, so I guess it's the only place to put it.
when you're coming to the rock from the north the first track you come to isn't very well signposted uh, it mentions something about a new car park but uh, that track will actually take you up to the top of the rock where we were just now you need to come along the road a little bit further and then you'll see a sign to a picnic area and walk trails and uh, if you want to do some walking here and go around the rock that's the area you need to come to and that's where we are now not a lot here just one little picnic table and a place to park ah, two picnic tables i stand corrected uh, the track that comes to the picnic area you come off to the right the other one goes through a gate and there's no vehicle access up there even though you can technically go through uh, the sign on the gate says don't go through there are two bushwalks here one is the rock trail where we've been told there's some orchids and the other one the bushwalk which we probably won't be doing today and unfortunately because we are pushed for time on this trip we're only out for two full days exploring uh, not going to have time to do much more than just have a quick look around the continent area because we're heading down to Hyden and Wave Rock tomorrow a few everlastings around here by the rock but uh, not a whole lot else I gotta say Entry to Wave Rock is charged and uh, you stop at the little pay station here. It takes coins or credit card. And the entry fee currently as we are filming this is $12 for a car. That's up to four people. This is the world famous Wave Rock. Now it's not the only wave formation we've got around the place on these granite outcrops in WA. There's quite a few of them actually. But this is probably the largest and the longest. They're formed, I think, by general erosion while the rock is still mostly covered with soil. So at one stage the soil would have reached up to the lip that you can see at the top there and uh, the erosion that's happened to create the wave formation would have happened underground and it's only once the earth was washed away much much later on that the wave formation was finally exposed now the rather unsightly wall that you can see along the top of the rock there was built to direct water into a dam and we'll be having a look at that as we just walk around the corner here it, uh, unfortunately it does detract somewhat from the appearance of the rock but uh, water in these areas was very scarce so they made as much use as they could of any of these granite outcrops to collect water a little bit of a climb to come up on the rock walk 
but certainly worth it when you get up here and uh, you can see the dam they constructed to provide the town with water and here you get a bit of an idea of how the wall along the top is constructed and to this day it still funnels water down into the dam all the wetland areas around here at the moment are full oh pretty view yes nice view from up here this time of year with all the water on the rock you get these little ecosystems developing little, little invertebrates live in the ponds up here just for a short time each year when it's nice and wet and for the rest of the season they're all just eggs buried in the mud or the earth at the bottom of the ponds you can see there's been so much rain up here recently that this is even still flowing down the rock it's the wave formation of course that gets the real publicity on the rock here but if you make your way onto the top and have a look around you find these beautiful little secluded spots amongst the boulders and uh, they're quite special in their own right spend quite a lot of our time looking for orchids and looking at this patch here you might just pick up the little blue one down there but you might miss the rest now I'm going to get down and take some still shots of them hopefully some are going to come out they are absolutely tiny there's even some small fungi down there that's uh, just casually walking past you would almost certainly miss it It's an area up here on the rock where you can see the impacts of humans and uh, some of what they've done to the rock. This was obviously a quarry and you can see the stone blocks that have been cut away here. So unfortunately this area here is an example of the damage that uh, we've done in the past to the rock. There are a lot of red ink sundew up here on the rock in these little damp areas. Now you come up here in the dry weather you would hardly notice them but now you can really see where they get their name from. They are very very red when the conditions are good and it's nice and damp. And if you take the time to look around up on the rock you'll find all sorts of little treasures like this most of the flowers you're going to find up here are going to be tiny because the nutrients are so poor you're not going to find the big showy blooms that you'll find down lower but uh, these are worth looking for you can see erosion at work here these two little trickles of water coming down from one pool to another gradually just cutting into the top of that rock one of the methods that uh, erosion uses on the rocks is plant life of course they get down into the cracks in the rocks first comes a little bit of sand a little bit of soil builds up a seed drops in a bit of water comes along and then you get the plants coming in and expanding and expanding and that all aids to the cracking of the rock well we were really hoping for a few more wildflowers but uh, very very little around here at the moment even in the scrubby areas at the bottom of the rock here, it's almost nothing. <laughs> 